Hello everyone, this is Ahmed Dan of AhmedDan.com. You're watching one of my New Zealand travel videos and today I'll show you some roadside scenes in Auckland. In the very beginning of the video, some scenes were taken outside Auckland when I was returning from the Waitomo Glower Capes. New Zealand is a country in the southwestern Pacific Ocean made of two main islands, North and South Island. Thank you for watching this video. Forget about subscribing this channel, forget about liking this video. Uh, there will be more videos coming up, so I'll see you shortly. Thank you. down Queen Street so then Queen Street became then at the more Main Street 70s, 80s, 90s into the turn of the century. There's still a little bit of that activity there now but since the turn of the century and the rapid increase of land and house prices these days and earthquake paranoid, not that it's just it's a recent thing, New Zealand is pretty much an earthquake volcanic country, it always has been, always probably will be. But um, probably in more recent history, after sort of the events of Christchurch and Kaikoura. And of course, 
Christchurch was never an earthquake city. The turn of the century now with uh, the increase in the value, that they're becoming more worthwhile to do up. Anyway, k has got a lovely eclectic group of shops and cafes and restaurants. And I'm hoping they don't sanitise and gentrify the area too much because I quite like this time of the morning it's generally a bit quiet, it's sort of the evening time so it comes, comes alive really. Um, and you get the police down here <laughs> quite frequently. Um, uh, it's Verona Cafe just on the right here, oh it's not even open yet, it's a happening all place in the evening. And then just here on the right there we are, look St Kevin's Arcade. And so it's got a wonderful collection of retro shops and a delightful cafe down the end of it. Do get renovated, all of those bigger buildings now get turned into um, apartments. Once all that strengthening work now, so you know, making these buildings a little bit safer to work or live in. Park on the right, it's called Western Park, it has a very much an art focus to it, they have some wonderful art events in there. The bits of building you see sticking out of the ground down here, they're not the remnants of an earthquake or anything, that's actually a permanent art installation. And just here at the lights, I hope they turn red. I'm probably the only driver in the city that hopes the lights will turn red when I want them to, but it's not going to. But here, up on the left, this lovely, what you see at the top, it says, oh, there we go, we're not going to stop that now. Lord Ponsonby's Antiques. It's probably the most run-down wooden building in the whole city now. But we're going to see a number of wooden buildings as we drive around. There'll be single-storey villas, double-storey villas, and churches, and they're all built out of solid carry timber. That's K-A-U. So just on the right here is a nice example of some of these shop frontages, all these connected ones. In these cases, they're all protected, the shop front. The back of them you can't see, they could knock down and build something else. The street on the right here, if you look right, you do get some nice views. So as I said, when I first came to Auckland, I lived in Ponsby. There's the main part of the Ponsby is down here. Well, it was back then, it still is a little bit, it's, it's what we spread right down the road now. And I actually lived in a little street up here. I just want to show you the street because it's got all these very old working class houses down there. They're all very, very expensive now and renovated. But it's this street just here on the right. Take a look down there. They're all through that area actually, but you just see a few down there on the left hand side, all very close together. No off street parking. In fact, the houses were that close together. I could put my hand at my bedroom window and the neighbor could do the same and we could shake hands. <laughs> Mind you, back then I was a lot younger, we'd have a lot of house parties, we'd be sharing a few beers between the windows. As I said, a lot of the inner city houses are taken over by professional people, like these ones here on the left, there's an accountant in one and a lawyer in the other. And where there's something they could pull down, an old workshop or factory, they tend to build apartments like these ones on the left. But even in this area, say a one bedroom apartment, would still cost you probably about four hundred to five hundred thousand dollars. I don't know if it's going to sparkle much today. But in Maori, why W A I? There's a lot of places around New Zealand with why in it. It means water because we're pretty much surrounded a lot with water. And other places like you probably heard of uh, Waiheke Island or Waitomo Caves. In the case of Waitomo Caves, Tomo means basically a hole in the ground and you've got Y, so it's water, water and a hole in the ground, which it is, it's Waitama Caves. Uh, St Mary's around to the right, average price here, three to four million dollars. On the intersection here, just to the right, there's a lovely little park called Point Erin Park. It was originally a Maori Pa site. Now, a Maori Pa was sort of their version of like a fortified village. And they always built them on strategic headlands and elevated areas to give them maximum advantage. And then what they'd do is around the edge of these areas, they'd build wooden palisades. That only finished erupting 550 years ago, so not very long at all. There'll be some people that try and get you to believe that the volcanic could come off the bridge and up by some lights.
So this way we're, we're heading north right now and this is the, the number one highway so now we're going to come down onto what we call the North Shore. It's still part of Auckland, we just call it the North Shore. The main suburb over here is Takapuna, just straight ahead of us there with all the I'll a bit more about it. toll over the um, bridge or on the motorway. The only toll system we've got is further north at the top end of this motorway, still about 50 k's away, there is a tunnel and there's a toll to go through that tunnel. Just off to the left there, there's Rangitota, but as I said, we'll, talk, we'll be going past here a bit later on. And then in between those two ships, you'll see a revolving restaurant. And of course, if you're feeling a bit brave, you can do a sky jump up there or a skywalk. They did offer it to me a few years ago. I laughed and I said, you guys are going to pay me to step off here. But anyway, even if they paid me, I don't think I'd do it. So. Um, Auckland's also referred to as the city of sails and in surfing. It's also where you find the Tasman Sea. Uh, that's that body, body of water between New Zealand and Australia. And if you manage to, uh, that we quite often, quite often refer to that water um, as the, the ditch, you're going to jump the ditch. Um, and if you're staying in a straight line across the ditch, you'd bump into that little island over there called Australia, uh, down Melbourne Way. Melbourne and Auckland are on similar latitudes. Back in 1642. Unfortunately, Abel didn't hang around too long here. Work done, take it out of the water, give it a clean. You can get it all done down here. First up though down here, just on the right here, you see a building with a wooden little lighthouse hanging on the side of it. It's a very historic lighthouse and I'll show you the real one out in the harbour later. It's a very historic carry lighthouse called Beam Rock Lighthouse. It sits on a rock and a reef out there. Now if you don't have a sailing boat and you've got a little motorboat and you've got nowhere to keep it in your inner city apartment, or maybe down that street where I used to live with no Wall Street parking, there's actually a business just here on the left. I'll go nice and slow past the doorway. On the left here, see this open doorway here? If you look in there and through the front windows, you'll see all these stacked up motorboats on either side, and there's about four or five stories high. Do whatever you want done to it. Um, give it a clean, pop it back up on the shelf again. Just like your most favorite library book, really. <laughs> Now also keep in mind, ever since we left the Harbour Bridge, all this flat area that we're going to be driving over, and it's quite an extensive area, right? And also just up to the left there, you'll see a, a big blue coloured boat there with a big sailing mast. Everybody see that boat just there? That's good, that's my boat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 